way where a mother is considering legal options following the death of her transgender son. Brittany Brockenbrow claims endless bullying at Nottoway Middle School is what led her son, Jesse, to take his own life last year. On your side at six, Karina Bolster spoke with Jesse's mother and has a response from school leaders. Karina? Well, Makia and Kurt, the last year has been incredibly difficult for the Brock and Brow family. Uh, Brittany saying she's coming forward now after seeing the rising number of alleged bullying incidents in the school her son once attended. A heartbeat. It's all Brittany Brock and Brow has left of her son, Jesse. For 15 seconds at a time, my baby lives again. And it really, really sucks. Jesse took his own life one month to the day after his 14th birthday in 2021. He ended up taking some over the counter medication and it destroyed his brain. Brock and Brow says she managed to talk to him before the meds took full effect. He let me know point blank that the reason why he took the pills was because he couldn't endure it any longer. He couldn't endure what was going on at school. Jesse came out as non-binary at the end of sixth grade before identifying as transmasculine. We were immediately accepting of him, let him know that, you know, whatever his gender identity or sexual orientation was, he was loved and supported. But Brock and Brow says that support didn't carry forward at school. He was threatened, he was taunted, he was misgendered and dead named and it was very hard on him. According to Jesse's mom, she had conversations with administrators multiple times. Some accommodations were made due to certain situations. A group of boys were waiting for him in the bathroom. Um, as soon as he saw them, he turned around and left, and that was when the administration said he could only use one bathroom, and that was the one up by the office that was for staff only. But Brockenbrow says the bullying continued, and it only happened after Jesse came out. There was so much hatred and negativity and intolerance that he withdrew. We make sure that we have an environment where all of our students feel welcome. Uh, where they are in a, in a place where they are able to be themselves. We strive to have each student recognized as the individual that he or she is. Nottaway School Superintendent Dr. Tamisha Grimes sat down with me in a rare on-camera interview last month. Along with a public relations specialist in the room, I asked a variety of questions about the environment inside Nottaway Middle School, including whether bullying is a problem. We do not speak specifically about uh, situations with students. Dr. Grimes says it's due to confidentiality reasons involving students who are minors. However, in the last few months, several families have come forward during the school board public comment period to address concerns. In January, one mother spoke with us about a reported incident from October involving her son. It wasn't just a simple, oh, someone got in a tussle and your child was popped in the mouth. You know, we're going to suspend so and so and so and so for five days. This was an assault, a sexual assault. The board should have been notified. In recent weeks, her son also spoke up at the school board meeting. Why do you and Mr. Outlaw continue to, to, to publicly say what happened to me did not happen? It happened. In January, Dr. Grimes confirmed an investigation into the alleged assault alongside the sheriff's office. While the mother of that alleged victim says the suspect was convicted, neither the Commonwealth's attorney, sheriff, or superintendent would confirm that conviction. We always have to respect confidentiality of our students, and it would not be wise or prudent or fair to our community, our students, our parents to start talking about specific incidents that occur. Per Nottaway's student handbook, the superintendent is required to report incidents, including sexual assaults, to the State Department of Education. That information is available online. A spokesman for the agency says data from 2021-2022 won't be available until after the school year ends. But there are reports from previous years at Nottaway Middle School. In 2020, there were no reports of sexual assault, but one reported fight. That was also the year when many schools opted for virtual or hybrid learning due to the pandemic. 
In 2019, there were 30 reports of fighting, one threat, whether it be verbal or physical, and five reports of sexual offenses. In 2018, one assault and battery, 25 fights, three threats of verbal or physical harm, three sexual offenses, and two reports of bullying. The safety of our students is, my gosh, that's like, that's our most important. Yes, we're here to educate, but quite frankly, if students don't feel safe, they're not going to focus on their learning. In March, the school system held an annual safety forum for families. Dr. Grimes encourages students to come forward with any uncomfortable situations they may encounter. The only way to know that they know is to tell. And once the student tells, I am confident that every adult in Niowa County Public Schools will take the appropriate steps to reach out to the student, to the parent, to get the information, and then to do what's necessary for that student to feel supported while he or she is here. But Brock and Brow says in her broken heart, she finds that hard to believe. The mother coming forward now worried about other transgender students and the boy who says he was sexually assaulted. This poor child is at a much greater likelihood of self-harm, suicide, you know, PTSD, things like that. I can't stand silently anymore. My son's life mattered and that child's safety mattered and neither one of them were valued by this school system at all. Now, all Nottaway parents do have access to a bullying incident reporting form that's available online. If you believe your child may be dealing with a situation, contact administrators by phone or email. On your side, Karina Bolster, NBC 12 News. Thank you, Karina.